Hello. It is Sunday, November 28th, 2021, although it may not still be by the time you hear this. We'll have to see. Anyway, I am Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. Just got home from the opera, actually, and I noticed that the New York Times has published a cryptic crossword. Uh, This is part of the variety puzzles. I'm not very familiar with the variety puzzles. They're extra puzzles that are published on Sunday, and they include crosswords, acrostics, and some other rotating puzzles, I think, of which I'm almost completely unaware, (laughs) I have to say. And I think it's because I have been solving the New York Times crossword for so long on the app, in my case, the iPhone app, and none of the variety puzzles are published there. You have to go to the website to see them. And in fact, some of them can't even be solved on the website. Some of them are only available as a downloadable PDF file. Uh, in any case, the when they publish variety crosswords, those are solvable on the website. And the, I don't usually do them. I usually forget they exist, but I noticed that they had a cryptic. And I thought, well, people occasionally ask me, why don't you solve cryptics on this channel? And the answer is because I'm not very well acquainted with them. I've only I've only tried a few cryptics. I've been trying to learn more about them recently so that maybe I could solve some on the channel. And I figured, let's try this one. I suspect that because it's being published in the New York Times, which is a venue that does not regularly feature cryptics, they, they may occasionally do so in the variety, but it's certainly not a standard feature. I assume that for that reason, it's probably not at the upper end of difficulty for cryptic crosswords, although I must say, as someone who doesn't solve very many cryptics, any cryptic is pretty high on the difficulty scale. So we'll see. I I honestly don't really know whether I'll be able to solve this or not. And if I can't make any headway, maybe I won't even release it. And if I solve it, obviously I will release it. What I don't know is what happens somewhere in between where I can sort of, I don't know, what if I solve half of it? I have no idea. I haven't thought that far ahead. Anyway, I did glance at it. I did glance at a few clues. So some of these I I, um, I did sort of uh, puzzle through a bit, but I have not seen uh, the vast majority of the crosswords. So I don't really know what to expect in terms of difficulty. Because I don't solve cryptics very often in this channel, I will try and talk through the clues to the extent I'm able to solve them in greater depth than I ordinarily do, because cryptics do bear up they they do bear some explaining, I must say. They're they're quite, I mean, they are cryptic, to, to, to put it uh, as straightforwardly as you could. In any case, this cryptic crossword was constructed by Ali Gascoigne and edited, as always, even in the case of the cryptic, by Will Shorts. So again, I really don't know what to expect, so I don't know what I should promise you. But let's just get this, let's get this going. All right, so here we have pay at the start to get on section of website. I explained there was one cryptic clue I solved on the channel several days ago because it was um, part of a daily series of cryptic clues published by the constructor of that day's crossword. So I sort of explained how they work, but I'll, I'll recap, I'll re, re, sort of recapitulate that here. Every cryptic clue, or at least most cryptic clues, not all, but the great majority of the time, A cryptic clue will consist of a definition, a straightforward definition in the style of a typical crossword definition, and also some kind of wordplay. And generally speaking, again, not always, but generally speaking, almost always, the definition will be at the beginning or the end of the total definition, the clue, I should say. And so here, we're going to, our definition is going to be something like, pay. Could be pay at the start. Probably not. Pay at the start doesn't really sound like a definition of something. Could be section of website or could be website. I mean, it, 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 those are plausibly, I think, what the um, what the definitions might be. And I'm pretty sure I know which one it is. So let's take a look. I, I'm going to just say, I think the definition is section of website. I think that's the definition. So we're looking for a four-letter word that means section of website. And you may be able to infer what that is, but let's work through the wordplay. So pay at the start. Most bits 
of the wordplay in cryptic crossword are essentially giving you letters that you're going to use to assemble the word that is defined in the definition. And in this case, when we see pay at the start, this is telling us we want the start of the word pay, so a P in this case. And then we have uh, to get on. Now, <laughs> this is it's a bit of a pun in a way, or maybe not it's not necessarily a pun, but it's it's a bit of misdirection. And you have to get used to this in cryptic crossword clues. This is saying to get on. And what this means is, in this case, to get on in years, to age. So we have P from pay at the start and age from to get on. And that results in page, which is section of website. And honestly, especially on easier cryptics, I, I would say a lot of what you're doing is trying to figure, trying to infer what the definition is, trying to then come up with a word that matches the definition and then sort of reverse engineer uh, how the wordplay spells out the word, the answer that you found. And sometimes it's something in between. You'll sort of, you'll see something like pay at the start and you'll think, oh, I think that's P, pay at the start of P, pay. And then you can say, oh, section of website, page, and that starts with P. So now how does age mean to get on, if you see what I mean. So you're sort of trying to, to triangulate your way to the answer. So let's see here. This is money pooled to acquire standard Warhol pieces, for example. And this is two, uh, two words. And cryptic crosswords, unlike American style crosswords, um, crypt when I say American style, I mean as opposed to British style, which is um, cryptics are much more common in Britain, although there are British general knowledge crosswords. Uh, nothing exclusively British or American about the two styles, but they do tend to be more common in each of the two countries. Anyway, so we have we know it's two words with three letters each. And as I was saying, in cryptic crosswords, unlike in sort of American general knowledge knowledge crosswords, you're given not just the number of letters in the answer, but specifically how those letters um, are allocated to the number of words in the answer. So two, three letter words. And our definition could be money. It could be money pooled or money pooled to acquire, although I'm not sure what that would mean exactly. And then our definition could, could, could be one of those. It could be, for example, or Warhol pieces, for example. And I think in this case, the definition is Warhol pieces, for example. Um, and so how do we, how do we use money pooled to acquire standard in order to get there. And I'm actually trying to figure that out myself right now because I think I know what the answer is, again, purely from the definition. So how do we get there from this wordplay? Let's see. Um, well, let me just tell you what I think the answer is. I think it's pop art, which would be Warhol pieces, for example. Pieces of art by Andy Warhol, for instance. Pop art was his genre. So we have money pooled to acquire, money pooled to acquire, oh, standard, to acquire standard. So we have, I see, so we have pot. If you can see here, the, the, the word begins with P-O and ends with T. That's a pot, which is money pooled. And then, we have standard. Ah, I see. So the money pooled, which is the pot, acquires to acquire, meaning sort of puts inside of itself. It acquires it inside itself. It acquires standard, and a standard would be a par. If you're not up to par, you're not up to the standard in question. So here we have par, which is standard, and par has been acquired by pot, which is money. the money pooled, a pot, a pot in a poker game, for instance. So that... <laughs> That's what that is. It took, me, it took me a while to get there after sort of inferring the answer. All right. So here, let's see. We have writers getting a drink somewhere in Florida. Writers getting a drink. All right. So our definition is going to be writers. Could be writers getting a drink, but that's, that's most of the clue. Seems unlikely. Um, the definition could be Florida. Could be somewhere in Florida. I think 
the, the, the two most likely definitions would be writers or somewhere in Florida. Probably not Florida because I don't know what a definition Florida would be. It would probably somewhere in Florida, so possibly a place, a city or a town in Florida. And I do believe that is actually the case here. And I think it is Pensacola, which I recognize as a city, I suppose, in Florida. And how does writers getting a drink somewhere in Florida uh, work out to Pensacola? Well, if we have writers, a pen is a writer, right? I mean, you could say a pen is a writer, something that writes. And so writers, plural, is pens. And then A, this is the kind of thing you have to look out for in crosswords, cryptic crosswords, I should say. The A is actually just the letter A. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes a letter in a cryptic clue is just the letter in the answer, and that's it. So we have writers getting, and the getting, I think, in this case, is just telling us that it's adjacent to the A. So writers getting A is pens A. And then drink, in this case, is a cola, a cola, a soft drink, a soda. And that makes pensa cola. All right. Here we have, as a rule, army chief left before end of ceremony. So the definition, it could be as a rule, could be ceremony or end of ceremony, or I guess conceivably before end of ceremony. I think it's as a rule. And we see army chief. We look at what we have here. I mean, crosses are, so, I mean, they're, they're obviously helpful in traditional crosswords, but boy, they are all the more necessary in cryptics, especially because we have fewer of them. As you can see in British style crosswords generally, not just cryptics, but sort of traditional crosswords as well. We have a lot, we have many fewer crosses than we do in American crosswords. Anyway, the thing I noticed is that army chief maybe could be gen or general. And as a rule, it's sort of similar to the word general. As a rule means generally. So can we infer that that's the answer and try and reverse engineer this. We have general, which is an army chief, and then left before end of ceremony. Ah, yes. So left is just L. L is a fairly common abbreviation for left, L and R for left and right. So we have army chief left or army chief L, so general L, and then before, meaning these letters are going to be, in this case, before whatever it is we're putting next, end of ceremony. And in this case, it's the letter Y. The end of the word ceremony is a Y, so we're putting that right there. Okay. Now we have a cookout involving seafood and meat coated in something sweet. So our definition could be cookout or cookout involving seafood or sweet or something sweet. Or I guess it could be meat coated in something sweet. I mean, theoretically, that's possible. Although, again, I think it's unlikely because that, that's so much of the definition or the clue that there was not much left for the wordplay. So I, I think this is cookout involving seafood, just based on the definition and, and how many letters we're filling. Although I'm not sure yet. I need to sort of cookout involving seafood and meat coated in something sweet. I wonder if this coated in means we're going to surround some letters. I'm wondering if it could be clam bake, which is a cookout involving seafood. I The reason I'm not very confident about that is because I don't know if that, is that one word or would that be two words with four letters each? Can we make this work with the wordplay? Let's see. So cookout involving seafood would be the clam bake part. And then and meat coated in something sweet. Ah, well, something sweet could be cake. Ah, yes, I see. Okay. So we have a cake, which is something sweet. I'm sorry, I just got a notification. And then we, it's okay. And then we have a meat, which is lamb. So the lamb is being coated in cake, something sweet. So clam bake, there we go. All right, what about this? Enthusiastic Republican taking a call on the phone. So let's look at where our where our definition could be. Could be enthusi oops, could be enthusiastic, could be enthusiastic Republican, could be phone or on the phone, or a call on the phone, probably not a call on the phone. It's sort of redundant with on the phone. And I so Republican capitalized in this case, 
makes me think R is going to be in here. Uh, the letter R, I suspect, is going to be used as an abbreviation for Republican. And we actually already have two R's in the clue. So I think that's a pretty safe bet. And we have a Republican taking a call on the phone. All right. I think the definition is enthusiastic. And I think what we're doing here is we have Republican and then taking. And I think taking is similarly to, which one was it? Yeah. Similarly to getting in this Pensacola clue, I think the taking is just saying that there are in Republican is adjacent to, again, actually the letter A. I think we're, once again, it's not, it's certainly not always the case that A just means A, but so far twice in this puzzle it does. So I think we have RA from a Republican taking A and then call on the phone. Another word for call on the phone would be to ring somebody. You call somebody on the phone, you ring them, and that gives us raring, which is enthusiastic. You could be raring to go, enthusiastic to go. So, all right. So now we have all of the crosses we're going to get for nine down. So let's see. Does that does that help? We have parent in England drinks a good new bottle of champagne. So our definition could be champagne or bottle of champagne, or I guess new bottle of champagne. Could be parent or parent in England kind of think parent in England looks like the most likely, but I'm actually not seeing what this is, to be honest. This is probably going to start happening more as I work my way through this puzzle, or I just don't actually see it myself. And I apologize for anyone watching who's a cryptic veteran and is going to be yelling at me probably quite a bit on this video. Let's see here. Boy, I don't know. And it is it is rough knowing that I'm not going to get any more crosses in here. Ranks. A good new, good, good, good. Oh, I see what it is. Ah, I was wrong. It's not parent in England. I think I sort of see what this is, kind of. I don't have all of it yet. So I do think a good new, well, maybe not. Oh, no, no, no. Okay. Yeah. Okay. There's something I'm not quite getting there. I think it's a Magnum in this case, a bottle of champagne. And I think good is G. And I wonder if drinks a good could be another a actually yet another strangely enough a yes. Okay. Parent in England is mum, um, the British equivalent of mom. And so we have mum, which is flanking the letters here. And then the parent in England, mum, drinks, again, in other words, sort of contains, drinks into itself, brings into the mum a good new. So we have a good new is a g n. A again, just the letter A. I can't believe that's happened three times already. And then, and in fact, in this case, it's in the same position as the one in Pensacola. Um, good G again. G, a common abbreviation of good. You could see that in a number of places, including, I don't know, rating quality of antiques or something. You could have G or VG for good and very good. And then N, a common abbreviation for new. And um, and that gives us a parent in England, a mum, drinks a good new. And then that gives us a bottle of champagne, a magnum. So there we go. All right. Okay, let's see. Four down. To finish with, I wonder if that's an H possibly, you should go downtown for Japanese food. To finish with, you should go downtown for Japanese food. So the definition could be to finish with. It could be, I guess, to finish, maybe. It could be Japanese food, or it could be simply food. It could be food. I mean, I could see that chow could fit in here if the definition were simply food. But I don't know where Japanese would come into that, so I don't really think it's very likely. To finish with, it could be an H, which is the finishing letter of with. Does that help? You should go downtown. What is that? Boy, I don't know. I just, sorry, I'm just checking the time. 
I might actually have to stop this, not just because I can't do it, but also because I might run out of time. Um, okay. Anyway, I'm really not seeing this. It's let's see to finish with one of the things I'm wondering. I was maybe you used the concluding letters of several words in a row. Oh, yeah, you do. Oh, okay. I see, I see what it is now. It is Japanese food, and it is to, okay. So here's a new kind of process, I guess, that we've not yet seen in this puzzle. So this is saying to finish with, you should go downtown. And in this case, this little clause to finish with is operating on you should go downtown. And then four is just telling us that all of these things are for Japanese food. All of the things we said before to finish with you go down, you should go downtown is going to mean, is going to spell out Japanese food, which is our definition. And I think it is udon, which is a, which is in fact a Japanese food. So what's happening here is we're saying to finish with, you should go downtown. And that's saying, take the last letter of each of these words. So you from you, D from should, O from go, and N from downtown. And that makes udon, the Japanese noodles. And that, that happens in cryptic. Sometimes you'll be told to use the first letters or the concluding letters of several of one word or or several words in this case i think we had we had pay at the start and one across and that meant the start of the word pay but in this case we're doing it from several letters in a row anyway let's look at three across drunk blacked out a lot so the definition could be drunk or drunk blacked out but there's no way that that's too much of the clue it could be lot or a lot and those could mean different things because a lot means much of something, whereas lot could could be a noun, meaning a sort of a bay or an area or one's position in life, something like that. Drunk blacked out a lot. I don't know that I want to tackle this without some more crosses. It's such a long answer. Let's see. Where else can we look? What about this? A short word with a Y. Father has informal agreement to settle debts. So our definition could be father, probably not father has, or father, yeah. could be settle debts, or it could be debts. I think this one I think is fairly straightforward and I think is settle debts. And I think it is uh, pay up. Why do I think that? I think that because a father is a pa, pa, a word for father. And in for, so has is another one of our linking words. All it's really doing is connecting the letters we got from father, which are pa, P A. It's just connecting them to whatever comes next. In this case, informal agreement. And one informal agreement is, yep, yep, that's it. Yep, the answer is pay up. And then we have two, which is just saying, father has an informal agreement to settle debts. So we're taking father has an informal agreement, we're using that to get to settle debts, the, the phrase pay up. And that, that was aided by the cryptic crossword convention of telling us that this answer is not just five letters, it's actually five letters split up into two words of three and two letters respectively. All right, let's look here. Going round public school, a guest somehow steals the limelight. So the definition could be going round, could be going round public school. That doesn't really sound like anything. So it could be going or going round. It could be limelight or steals the limelight. Probably not somehow steals the limelight. All right, going round public school. This makes me really think that we're going to, public school makes me think we're going to take the letters PS, public school, as in the New York public school system, for instance, um, and we're going to take something that means going and surround public school with it. So we do have a P here actually already. So what if we put an S there? Ah, yes. Okay. I see what this is. So, um, I think this is, I think the definition is steals the limelight. And you could say that stealing the limelight is upstaging someone. So upstages in this case, because steals the limelight upstages and there's our PS. And this is a little more complicated than some of these have been so far. So we have a guest somehow steals the limelight. Now, steals the limelight is the definition, so we don't need to worry about that now in the wordplay. We've already used that part. We have going around public school, so something meaning going. We'll go around 
this. We'll deal with that in a moment. After public school, we have a guest somehow. Now, <laughs> once again, I think this is bizarre. It's almost like this is a theme. Uh, once again, I believe we're using the A simply to mean A. That's it. We're taking A and using it as the letter A. And then we have guest somehow. Now, does this work? Yeah, I think it does. I think it does. Okay. So a guest somehow is telling us to take the letters in a guest, A-G-U-E-S-T, and somehow means we're sort of taking those letters, but they're in a different order. It's a, it's these letters somehow. Not this way, not the way that we've spelled them here, a guest, but some other way. Somehow we're going to use these letters. And all of those are going to go around public school. So I was incorrect. I thought maybe the word, we'd have a synonym for going that surrounds public school. But in fact, this is saying going around public school. So in other words, surrounding public school will be a guest somehow. And if we take the letters in a guest and we rearrange them, we do something with them, we get U-T-A-G-E-S. That's We can sort of uh, use scramble those letters, rearrange them, and surround PS with them, and that gives us upstages. All right, I hope this is all making sense. Please leave comments if, if my explanations are insufficient in any case, because I would be more than prepared to believe they are. All right, 20 down. We have have search parties start to search. It's interesting. So the definition will probably involve search, because whether it's at the beginning or the end, it's it's the word search is there. So, I mean, I guess it could be have, actually. It could be, no, yeah, it could be have. In fact, maybe it is. Um, so it could be have, could be have search or have search parties, pretty unlikely again, because it's so much of the clue. Um, could also simply be the word search or to search or start to search. Although when I look at start to search, I do think that's going to be an S. I think I think that's going to, going to be the start to the word search. And that's also the last thing in the clue. So it may be the case that the word ends with an S because that's start to search, which may well indicate an S is at the end of the clue. So then if that's the case, the definition would be have or have search. Now, have search doesn't really sound like anything. So the clue, the definition is probably have. So then what's next? We have search parties. Well, and it, think about search parties in an Old West context. What might search parties be? They could be posses. And if we type posses and follow it with an S from start to search, we get the verb possess, which does mean have. So there we go. That's that's the answer, I think. Okay, here we have hot sauce improving nearly all bad tacos. So the definition could be hot, could be hot sauce, probably not hot sauce improving, that doesn't really mean anything, could be tacos, or it could be bad tacos. It's probably not bad tacos, because that's not, it doesn't really mean anything. I mean, it, well, it, does, it means something, but it's not a phrase unto itself. You wouldn't, it's not, it's not an idiomatic expression or anything like that. So it's probably either tacos, hot, or hot sauce. And when you look at what we've crossed so far, and you think about hot sauce, there might be a hot sauce that already sort of fits in here. And let's let's try Tabasco, which is the hot sauce that comes to mind to me, and see if we can if we can prove that out against the wordplay. So we have improving nearly all bad tacos. Now I I recognize this is going to seem ludicrous what I'm about to say, but I think that improving, much like somehow in going around public school, a guest somehow steals the limelight. I think improving is probably serving the same function. It's an anagram indicator. It's telling us we need to rearrange the letters in some of these words. And in this case, it's, it's even more complex because we have this nearly all bad tacos. So I think bad tacos is the thing we need to rearrange. And let's count how many letters are in bad tacos. It's eight. But the answer has seven. And so you might think, well, it can't be an anagram of bad tacos because that's too many letters. But in fact, we have this nearly all. So I think what that is telling us is that we're going to take almost everything from bad tacos, except for in this case, one letter 
That would leave us with seven let letters to scramble. And indeed, if you leave the D, oh, actually, it's not nearly all bad tacos. It's just nearly all bad. That's actually more helpful. It's a little bit easier, a little bit more straightforward. Nearly all bad means use almost all of the word bad. Just the B, the B A, but not the end. Use almost all of it. B A, and then tacos. So anyway, if we improve or rearrange the letters in B A tacos, we get an anagram of Tabasco, and that is the answer. A hot sauce, Tabasco. At least I think it's the answer again. All right, here we have world-weary liberal besieged by core political supporters. All right, so definition could be world-weary, world-weary liberal, probably not world-weary liberal, probably either world-weary or supporters or political supporters or core political supporters. And it could be all of those because with a B, well, okay, so world-weary liberal besieged by core political supporters. So it could be, I mean, core political supporters could be the definition. It could be something like bases or blocks, e each of which could be a core political core political supporters. You hear that in political punditry quite often. So can we get can we make either of those fit the wordplay blocks? World weary liberal. So the liberal would be the L besieged by. I suspect this means the L is being besieged by letters around it. So Liberal L besieged by core political supporters, which would be. No, that doesn't really make sense because if core political supporters is the definition, maybe maybe just political supporters is the definition. Although, then what is world weary doing? Not really doing anything. If this were bases, would this help at all? We don't even have the L for liberal. The reason I keep saying L for liberal is because much like the R in Republican, I suspect the reason this is capitalized is to turn it into a proper noun and then therefore something that could be more plausibly represented by a single letter, in this case, L. Um, maybe the definition is not political supporters or core political supporters. Ah, I see what it is. Okay, so I was right that liberal besiege means we're going to take the L from liberal, or rather L is an abbreviation for liberal, and besiege it by or surround it by uh, something else, in this case, core political supporters. So if we imagine core political supporters to be a block, just as an example, you could have something like BLLOC, it doesn't really look like anything, or BLOLC, right? We're taking the L from liberal and put it inside, putting it inside of block. But I think the other political supporter word I had makes more sense. No, sorry, that doesn't work. Ah, blase, here we go. Taking the L from liberal and besieging it by core political supporters or your base. Your base comprises your core political supporters, and those letters from base are going to besiege, surround the L to make blasé, which means world-weary. So there we go. All right. What do we have here? Kindness is the first marker of generous people. So the definition could be kindness, could be generous people, or it could simply be people. So kindness is the first marker. Okay, so the first marker of generous could simply mean the first letter of the word generous. It's just a verbose way of saying, take the first letter of generous. And that's a G. And the reason I think that's relevant is because we have a G right here already in our crosses. That would make me think that the definition is kindness because if G is the first letter in the answer and that comes from the first marker of generous, that would mean that the first marker of, gener of generous is the beginning of the wordplay, and therefore the definition would be kindness, which comes before that in this case. So we have the first marker of generous, which we we have, that's a G, and then we have people. And I think in this case, people, you might sort of think, okay, well, people, a race of people, a particular race, an ethnic group, people, sort of a synonym for a group of people, a particular group of people. And when we combine that, the G and the race, we get grace, which you could say is a synonym of kindness or, you know, close enough. Okay, there we go. All right, we made, made better progress than I expected to, to be totally honest. Here we have family member awkwardly tries to follow dance moves. All right, so our 
definition could be family. It could be family member. Probably not family member awkwardly. Could be moves. Could be dance moves. Plausibly could be follow dance moves. It's possible. Anyway, um, I think awkwardly is going to be, I think a some maybe a somewhat more straightforward anagram indicator in the vein of uh, somehow, a guest somehow, or what was the other one? Um, don't remember. Doesn't really matter. Uh, oh, improving. Yes, improving in hot sauce. Improving nearly all bad tacos. Boy, that was a convoluted one. Anyway, I think awkwardly is doing the same thing. I think awkwardly is going to tell us to rearrange some letters, probably in the word tries. So we probably have to mix up tries somewhere. And then that says to follow dance moves. So I think what that is saying is that the awkwardly tries, the rearrangement of the letters and tries are going to follow whatever we can put in for dance moves. And I think the most common way to interpret dance moves is steps. So let's put steps in here. So now we have five letters remaining to fill. And actually that sort of points towards the earlier, the previous suspicion that maybe what we're doing is awkwardly, we're rearranging the letters in the word tries, and that is five letters. So that would complete the clue. And when we look at this, that suggests, okay, well, that must mean the definition is family member and step something, starting with an S, well, step sister is a family member. And indeed, I-S-T-E-R is a rearrangement of the letters in tries, T-R-I-E-S. So there we go, stepsister, our family member in question. All right, this is a short one that looks good. Deal taking place in Mexico, perhaps. Uh, Mexico, perhaps. So the definition could be deal or deal taking place. Probably not. It's probably either deal or perhaps or Mexico, perhaps. I wonder what Mexico perhaps means. A country or a state or a land? Don't know. Deal taking place in Mexico, perhaps. Deal taking place in. So if it were deal, could it be anti? I don't think that really matches deal. Taking, oh. No, I thought I had something. Sorry, I thought I had something. But I don't think I do. Uh, I kind of think maybe Mexico perhaps is the... I don't know. I think I'm going to need more to get this. I have a few ideas, but none of them are really adding up to anything, unfortunately. I was thinking maybe it was cope for a moment. And then I said anti, which I don't think is right. Anyway, let's look here. Item in film archive. Just I'm looking at the shorter, the shorter answers. Um, item in film archive is genuine, we're told. Okay. I think we're told, I don't know what this is yet, but I think we're told this is a this comes up in cryptics. And what that means is you're looking for a homophone. So it could be that genuine, uh, I do see what it is. Yes, okay. So I think what this is telling us is that something that means genuine, we're told it. And what that's saying is someone said it aloud and it sounds like the thing we're looking for. So I think the definition here is item in film archive. And the wordplay is genuine, we're told. In other words, something that when spoken aloud, sounds like something that means genuine. We're told it vocally, verbally. And so I think it is a real, because genuine could mean real, as in authentic. And we're told it aloud. Someone says the word real, sounds like a film reel or an item in a film archive. So there we go. All right, 23 down. At the outsets, at the outset, all's peachy too. And here it's it's two words, a two-letter word followed by a four-letter word. At the outset. So the definition, I think it's probably at the outset. Um, but it could be two. Oh, maybe it is two, actually. I think it is. Yeah, okay. I was wrong. <laughs> well, I think I was wrong about at the outset. I think I think the definition might be two. 
um, as in also. And you might be able to think of another phrase that means that in two letters and four letters uh, sequentially. But let's let's pour through the uh, the wordplay a bit. So we have at the outset, all's peachy too. So at the outset, could that? All right, I'm just going to say I think this is as well, <laughs> and let's see if we can figure out why. So at the outset could be the outset of the word at, which would be an a. Ah, okay, and then all's peachy is swell. Well, ah, all's peachy, swell. It's great. Slightly archaic slang. And they sort of match each other in that respect. And then we get as well when we combine a, which is the outset of the word at, with swell for peachy. Okay. Here we have empty charger is on more than one occasion an emergency. Empty charger or an emergency are probably our definitions. Or empty, actually. Could be empty kind of thinking emergency or an emergency. I don't know. I'm not immediately seeing it. Where else can we look that's short? <laughs> Remove piece from inside lunar module. Five letters. Wow. So the definition could be remove, could be remove piece or remove piece from. Doesn't really seem very likely. Could be module or lunar module or inside lunar module. That seems unlikely as well. Um, so I'm wondering, remove piece from inside, oh, wait, I see how this works. All right, this is another category we have not yet seen in this puzzle. So the first thing I tried to do, when it said remove piece from inside lunar module, I thought, well, maybe the, maybe the definition is lunar module and we have to remove a piece from inside in order to make it. Inside has six letters. So if we removed a piece from that, if we removed a letter from it, we'd have five letters. Maybe one of them could mean lunar module, but I just don't see any way that that works. I think, in fact, what's going on is the definition is remove piece. Sort of an odd, odd definition, isn't it? What on earth does that mean? Well, it says remove piece and then from, I think it's just the thing that's saying we're going to get the answer to remove piece from the following wordplay. So from isn't part of the wordplay. It's just the sort of link between the definition and the wordplay. Anyway, here we have inside lunar module. So here's another category of cryptic clue. We're going to look for a word that is literally contained inside the phrase lunar module. And hopefully that word or phrase will mean remove piece, or in this case, actually single word, because we can see it's only one word. And I think it is unarm, unarm. The word unarm or remove piece, disarm somebody, I guess would be the more common way to say it, is literally found inside the phrase lunar module. So unarm, all right. Here we have excerpt from Austrian opera coming up live. So the definition could be excerpt or excerpt from, maybe probably not excerpt from Austrian opera, unless there's a very famous aria or something in an Austrian opera that I don't think that's what it is, but it's possible. Um, could be live or coming up live. Excerpt from Austrian opera, coming up live. My suspicion is that coming up is going to mean we reverse something somehow. The reason I think that is because in a, in a down clue, a clue that's arranged vertically, coming up means going backwards linguistically, if you see what I mean. It means we'd be spelling something backwards if we go in an upward direction. And so uh, so it could be coming up live, meaning the letters E-V-I-L, which would be live coming up. But it doesn't look likely if unarm is correct because it wouldn't really, um, I suppose we could sort of surround the A with those things, right? So it would be E V. A and then the I and the L. And that way, L-I-V-E would be coming up. And somehow that's surrounding the A in Austrian, maybe. maybe it does, Okay. You can see where I'm going with that, but I don't think it, it doesn't work. I think, in fact, what this is, is it's it's actually kind of, it's it's a nice coincidence that we solved this after unarm and actually that it, that it um, crosses unarm because I think we're doing the same thing again. We're taking 
In this case, an excerpt from Austrian opera means we're looking for a phrase that literally exists inside the phrase Austrian opera. But in this case, we're going one step further. We're not just finding it as we did in Unarm in Lunar Module. We're also reversing it. It's coming up. So can we find something that means live that's backwards in the phrase Austrian opera? And I think we can. If you look here, we have this I-A-N-O, or sorry, R-I-A-N-O. But if that were coming up, going backwards, it would be on air, which does mean live. Television that is live is on the air or is on air. Okay, so there's that. Let's, what can we do now? Let's look at 13 across. Endlessly hoping for relief from pain. All right, now the first thing that occurs to me when I see this is that we might be removing the ends of words. So endlessly, I mean, it, and the thing is endlessly could also be the definition, to be honest, or endlessly hoping or endlessly hoping for even, or pain, or relief from pain. So if endlessly, does that help? I mean, it could be removing the last letter. It could be removing the first and last letters, if you're imagining those as two ends, sort of bookends of the words. Oping, op, opin, could that be an opium thing somehow for relief from pain? Probably not. Endlessly hoping. So it could be endlessly hoping could be the definition. It might it might have nothing to do with letters and words. And then four would be would link us to the wordplay relief from pain. So hoping for relief, and then from is the link, and pain is the definition. That's possible as well. Seven letters, seven letters. Now, again, apologies for anyone e yelling at me through the screen for this one. Furniture that bulges in odd places. Oops. Sorry, just knocked my microphone. Okay, furniture that bulges in odd places. I see what this is. All right, here's yet another category we've not yet seen in this puzzle. All right, so the definition could be furniture, probably not furniture that bulges, that's sort of odd. Could be places or odd places, or I guess in odd places, there might be a word that means that. Um, but I think in this case, um, let me just confirm my guess here. Uh, yeah, all right, so I think odd places, what this is saying is take the phrase that bulges, but take it in odd places, meaning in this case, Take the letters in odd positions in these two words. In other words, positions one, three, five, seven, and so on. So if we if we assume then that furniture is the definition, and then we say that bulges in odd places, what are the letters in the odd places in that bulges? Well, they are T, position one, A, position three, B, position five, L, position seven, and E, position nine, and that gives us a table or a piece of furniture, furniture that bulges in odd places. All right, key NFL players have speed. So the definition could be key. It could be key NFL players, but I kind of suspect it's not because it doesn't end in a way that looks plural, but that doesn't mean it's not. It just means it might be something I'm not thinking of. Or the definition could also be speed. Now, when I see NFL, if NFL is part of the definition, then I, I don't know what to do with it because I'm nothing is obvious to me. I don't know much about the NFL. But if, if the definition is speed, or I guess have speed, then NFL might simply be the letters NFL possible. I guess the definition could also be key. It wouldn't have to be speed for that to be true. I don't know. I'm sorry. I don't know what this is. What is this here? 22 down. One Shakespeare King's uprising somewhere in the Middle East. Wow. Okay. So, 
uprising, I suspect is going to be similar to coming up in Seven Down. Uh, so Shakespeare King's uprising could be something like King Lear reversed. So we have R-A-E-L. Oh, yeah. Okay. Perfect. So uh, the definition could be one. Could be one Shakespeare King. Could be East or Middle East or the Middle East or in the Middle East or somewhere in the Middle East. It really could be, I mean, conceivably, you could imagine any of those technically being a crossword clue. Um, but I think I was on the money with one Shakespeare King's uprising. In other words, um, Shakespeare King's uprising would be Lear backwards, which when I spelled it made me think of Israel, which is somewhere in the Middle East. Now, how do we get one to mean is? <laughs> That I'm less certain of. Uh, oh, oh, wow. I see. Weird. Okay. So I think what's happening here is one means I, and it could mean that for, I, I think conceivably, at least two different reasons. One meaning one, the number referring to the Roman numeral well, being referred to at by the Roman numeral I for one, but also it can conceivably be one in the royal sense, referring to oneself. One does not frequently solve cryptic crosswords, meaning I do not frequently solve crypt cryptic crosswords. So I think the one might just be the letter A, and that's just there. And then in a totally bonkers way, I think the Shakespearean king's uprising doesn't mean take Lear and reverse it. It means take Lear's, reverse it. L-E-A-R, Shakespearean King, Lear apostrophe S. So that would be when we uprise that, we'd get L-E-A-R-S, or rather when we spell it normally, we'd get Lear's, but when we uprise it, we get S-R-A-E-L, and that's Israel somewhere in the Middle East. All right, there's that. What is this? Oh, this empty charger thing I skipped. <laughs> empty charger is on more than one occasion an emergency. Empty charger. Okay. Empty charger. I see. Okay, I got it. Okay. So empty charger. What that means is take the word charger and empty it, hollow it out. Take away the sort of meat of it. Take away, in this case, the H-A-R-G-E. That leaves us with just C-R. We've emptied out the word charger. And that sort of fits here, right? Because if we put the C and the R from charger, that, that fits with the second letter, which was already an R. Okay. And then we have is. And as with at least three, possibly four A's in this puzzle, we're just going to take the letters is. That's it. And then on more than one occasion... You can see this is crisis, right? It's it's an emergency, which is a crisis. But how does that... Ah, well, <laughs> once again, all right, we've crossed us. I see what this is. On more than one occasion. Is that saying... Oh, more, more than one, more than one occasion. So a one occasion maybe is I, for the same reason it is in Israel, but we have more than one of them. So we have I's. I'm not 100% certain that I'm interpreting that correctly, but but I think that might be close. In any case, I do think the answer is crisis. It matches emergency. We've got the empty charger, the CR after having hollowed out charger. We've got the is from is. So I'm not, I think it might be I's, plural of the letter I, which is on more than one occasion, more than one occasion. Uh, that's just, That's my guess. I'm not 100% certain. All right. What do we have here? Listening, boy, this is a long video. <laughs> uh, listening device provided by old lawman, lawman that is extremely comfortable. So, could be listening, could be listening device, could be comfortable or extremely comfortable. Probably not extremely comfortable. I don't know how you would differentiate that enough from comfortable to justify needing the extremely to be part of the clue. But when I see extremely, 
it makes me wonder if that is similarly to the empty word, whatever that was, I wonder if it means take the extremes of comfortable. So a C and an E. And if that's the case, that would make the definition either listening or listening device, because we're assuming that extremely comfortable is part of the wordplay rather than the definition. So could we put CE at the end? Listening device provided by old lawman. Listening on notice now. Now, it's only one word. It's in a single eight-letter word that is extremely... Well, it could be another is, right? Oh, no. No, never mind. I thought I had it, but I don't. What's this? Maybe, I, maybe I'm on the wrong track entirely. Listening device or listening. I, think, I don't think I have enough of it to, to leave letters in, so I'm going to look elsewhere for now. Again, apologies if you're way ahead of me on this. I'm sure some of you are. Some claret ordered for those who have just arrived? Question mark. I, I don't entirely understand when the question mark gets deployed in cryptics the way I sort of intuitively understand it in the New York Times, because these clues are already so full of puns and wordplay that I don't ever quite understand <laughs> what the what the pun indicator means, because they, they, they feel like they should all have that. Anyway, um, I suppose what it means is that even maybe even the definition itself is a pun as opposed to um, the wordplay. Okay. Anyway, some claret ordered for those who have just arrived. So, uh, the definition could be those who have just arrived. It's possible. Could be arrived or just arrived. Could be some or some claret. I wonder if claret is red it's because it's a red wine. Some claret ordered for those who have just arrived. I'm not really seeing much right now. Definitely slowing down. I was doing all right at the beginning, wasn't I? But not so much right now. Let's, we haven't looked at, have we looked at all the answers? No, we haven't. A research facility in Korea treated small marsupials. Um, okay. Well, I think I, I think I basically can jump straight to knowing what the answer is, but let's see if I can figure out, look for the definition I think is small marsupials or possibly just marsupials. Um, it's one of those and two five letter words. It's probably pretty straightforward. Um, I think it is koala bears, but let's figure out why. So a research for facility in Korea. So Korea is clearly where the K comes from in this answer. Could be K-O, a research facility, but uh, O, oh. yeah. O, oh. O, oh. okay. Oh, I see, I think. Something like, I think treated yeah. Okay. So the definition I think is simply marsupials, not small marsupials. And that makes sense because again, small would be sort of extraneous. I mean, well, well, marsupials is a perfectly good definition of koala bears. You don't need the small for it to work. So the small is probably there for a different reason. And I think in this case, it's sort of the most straightforward part of the, the clue. It's just the letter S again at the end. It's the last thing we see before marsupials, before the definition. So it's probably the last thing in the answer. And I think it's just S for small and that's that. So let's look at the rest. I think a research facility is a lab. Once again, I think, I think once again, the letter A just means A and that's it. A lab. And it's the A research facility, A lab is in Korea. So again, it's inside of the other letters. A lab is inside of this. But when we look at the other letters, it's K-O-E-A-R. What does that mean? Um, and we, the S we already know is from small. Well, I think what that means is that treated much like um, somehow or improving or awkwardly, there is essentially an endless list 
of words that can be used to indicate an anagram. And in this case, uh, I think the treated is serving that function. And it's saying we should treat, we should perform surgery on, we should rearrange the letters in Korea. And that makes, it sort of, mis- I, I was misled inst- initially because the K and the O are actually still in the order in which they appear already in the word Korea. So they aren't actually mixed up, but the rest of the letters are. We have K O. E-A-R. And those are the five letters in Korea, but we've treated them. We've put their, put them some in a different order. And then a lab goes in to that treated Korea. And then an S caps it off. So there we go. All right. Drunk blacked out a lot. Um, I think drunk is yet another instance of our anagram indicators. So that would mean a lot or lot is the definition. I don't actually see what the definition is, but it seems fairly clear from the from the fill so far that blacked out is getting, it's drunk. It's getting all rearranged. The letters are going to be out of order. And does blacked out have 10 letters like our answer does? Uh, it does indeed. So that means that A is not part of the wordplay. It's either... Um, Part of the answer, part of the definition, I should say. So the definition is a lot, or the definition is simply lot, and a is just a linking word to connect the definition in the wordplay. All right, so a lot, uh, bulk something, maybe? If we're taking the letters from blacked out and inebriating them, making them drunk, blacked out, bulk, what have we not used? We haven't used C. It's only one word, though. Maybe it's not. I'm just going to write in the rest of the letters, just in an arbitrary order, just so I can see what they are. So we have an A. We need an A. We need a C. We have a K. We need an E. Uh, we need a D and a T. Could be buck rather than bulk. Oops, what did I do? I've lost. I don't know. I don't remember what the letters are. Um, well, hmm. Again, I'm sorry if you're seeing this. I'm not yet. Okay. Does that help us here, though? We we know the possible letters this could be. <laughs> uh, it's got to be something in blacked out. I mean, the first letter is what I'm saying, not the whole word. Um, the first letter must be a letter in blacked out, but not UK or O, uh, because we've already used those elsewhere. Anyway, what is the clue? Loudly proclaim that in the end, alcohol leads to stroke. So, Broke could be the definition, and then the wordplay loudly proclaim that in the end, alcohol, that all leads to stroke. The, the answer could be, in the end, could be the end of alcohol or the end of that, maybe. Or even an N from in the end, um, probably not. Loudly proclaim that. So it could be loudly proclaim that in the end. So if that in the end were a T, alcohol, rum, rum, oh yeah, it is. Okay, so we have loudly proclaim, That's that is our definition. Then we have that in the end. So we have the end of the word that, which is a T. Then we have alcohol, and I sort of just tried to think of different spirits, different alcohols that might actually be plausible to put in the middle of a word. And rum was the first one I thought of that would work because it meshes with this U, and because it R U M is a common collection of letters that could be in many words. Like v- vodka isn't really whiskey, isn't really you couldn't easily put those inside other words, but rum you could. And once I actually typed it in, I thought, well, it must be trumpet. So we had. That in the end, T, 
alcohol is a is rum and then leads to stroke so i see so the leads to again it's just a it's just saying put it next to these other letters it's saying take the letters from that in the end alcohol or drum and lead to put just put them next to a word for stroke which is pet to pet a dog for instance to stroke a dog there we go trumpet to loudly proclaim something Okay, and ah, I see what this is. The cross has made this much easier. Endlessly hoping for relief from pain. Endlessly hoping. Ah, wow, interesting. Okay, so we. I think the answer is aspirin, and this is saying. Wait, what is this saying? Yes, sorry. Okay, I see what it is. Endlessly hoping for. So hoping for, what's another word for hoping for? Could be aspiring. You could be aspiring. Uh, and if it's endlessly, we're taking the end off of aspiring. And when we take the end, the last letter, the G off of aspiring, we get aspirin. All right. And that works. So does, what if we looked at here? No, I don't think we've looked here at all. Game for which no demo is released. So it could be game. Probably not game for which or game for which no demo. That's that's almost everything. So it's, it's either game or released, I would suspect. That's my guess. Um, probably not demo is released. It doesn't really look right. So it's either game or released. For which no demo. No, de- okay. Could it be? Could released be yet another anagram indicator in which, in, in other words, we're sort of releasing these words, we're letting them go free and have them scatter their, their contents to the winds? Let's see. Because no demo is, if no demo is were to be released, no demo is, is eight letters long. And that's how many letters we need. And M, N, and E do all appear in no demo is. So that would make the definition probably game, and then for which would simply be the thing that links the definition to the wordplay. So it's a game for which no demo is released, somehow translates into this word. So no demo is released. No demo is game. Dom. Oh, oh, I see. Dominoes is a game. So we have the game of dominoes, and the word dominoes can be spelled with the letters in no demo is. Those letters have been released, and we're going to reassemble them to create a game, dominoes. All right. So does that help here at all? Drunk blacked out a lot. Well, it does look like it. Um, our theory about the blacked out anagram looks like it is holding true because those all of the letters we've put into this answer appear in the words blacked out. So um, bucket, ah, yeah, okay. Bucket load is a lot, a lot of something, a bucket load of that thing. And we're using the letters from blacked out, made drunk and grabbing them much like we released the letters in no demo is. All right, there we go. What is the, ah, oh, this is that claret thing. Oof, I'm, I'm running out of, running out of uh, new clues to find. I'm gonna have to solve the ones I gave up on. Listening device provided by old lawman that is extremely comfortable. Ah, okay. I do think I was right with that extremely comfortable being um, the extremes of the word comfortable. In other words, C-E. And... Aha, uh-huh, right. Okay. So listening device is the definition. Provided by, I think, is just our linking phrase that's telling us it's just the thing that sort of bridges the definition to the clue, so or to the, to the wordplay. So listening device is provided by. In other words, the answer to listening device is provided by all of this other stuff, which is the wordplay. Old lawman that is extremely comfortable. That's our wordplay. So 
um, we know we we got extremely comfortable. That's the extremes of the word comfortable. C E. Then we have is, which comes right before extremely comfortable. And in that case, I think it is just the word is. It's not really any way to know when that's happening. You you just have to sort of think, try it out, and see. So, an old lawman, I think in this case is Erp for Wyatt Wyatt Erp, and I think there might have been other Erps as well. But that makes oh what sorry. Oh, no. Earpiece. I do think it is earpiece. But what did I... Oh, oh. Okay, it's... Sorry, I was totally wrong. It's not that is as the letters is. It's that we were... It's a, that is translates to I-E. And you might say, why is that true? It's because this that is means... It's sort of an explanatory, ex, explanatory statement when you say, well, the answer to this is earpiece. That is those little buds you put in your ears to hear things better. I.e. id est. Latin, we use that abbreviation, I.e., to mean, that is to say, to sort of clarify something. And that's what's happening here. That is I.E. And I completely whiffed that. I thought it was an S, and then I, I didn't even, even after I realized the <laughs> the answer was earpiece, it, it still took me a moment to understand that is was not is. Is was simply part of that is to mean I.E., the abbrevi- common abbreviation I.E., all right, what about this? Key NFL players have speed. Key. Ah, all right. Once again, I see the answer before I really fully understand the wordplay. So I think there's a computer key. When it says a key, it means a key on the keyboard. And you might be able to easily interpret into it what that is in a nine letter word starting with B. So let's see, can I figure out what makes the rest of this work? I think I can infer it, even though it's not knowledge I personally have. So backspace is a key, starting with B in this case, and we're fitting in nine letters. So NFL players must be backs. That must be a position in hockey, which is, no, sorry, NFL. Uh, boy, I'm a dunce. Okay. NFL, not NHL. NFL, National Football League, so American football. Um backs. Uh, and that makes sense. Quarterbacks, what line backs? I don't know all the backs, but I've heard some of them. And that's, uh, that is certainly something that exists. So that's NFL players as backs. And then have speed. I think have is just another one of these sort of indicators to position the letters next to the other letters. It doesn't, I don't think it has meaning necessarily unto itself, but speed does. And someone's speed is their pace. So we have key NFL players, or rather NFL players, backs and speed, pace, and that makes a key, the backspace key. All right. What was this again? Oh, right. Deal taking place in Mexico, perhaps. Oh, I don't even know what the definition is. I don't know if it's deal or Mexico, perhaps, but I suspect it's one of those two. I guess it could be perhaps, just the word perhaps, but that would that would mean that Mexico is the last bit of the wordplay. And the reason that doesn't seem plausible is because the last letter here is an E, which doesn't seem to have, I mean, I know that the letter E exists in Mexico, but I can't think of a way to manipulate Mexico to end up with something ending with an E. I mean, if this were just as an example, I mean, if this were a sort of M, if this were an X, you could imagine MX for Mexico and then the deal taking place in that, and you'd have something that means deal inside of there. Um, but I don't see how to use Mexico here. So could Mexico perhaps be, what is Mexico an example of? A state, a country. When I say a state, I don't mean a US state like New Mexico. I mean, you know, a nation state. Um, I am baffled. I am utterly baffled. What was this one? Oh. I don't think we've seen this yet. Clear single fee introduced by former partner. So the definition could be clear. It could be clear single fee. It doesn't, I don't think so. It's probably either clear or partner or former partner. And I wonder, this says introduced by former partner. So I wonder if what that means is that introduced by former partner means the whole phrase, the whole answer is going to be introduced by something that means former partner or an X. So does that help? Then we would have single or single fee 
eggs single. Oh yeah, I see what it is. Okay, so single is oops is uh, is one a single crossword puzzle, one crossword puzzle, and then a fee could be a rate, a payment rate of payment, for instance, and then that gives us exonerate, which is clear, and in this case, clear as a verb, meaning to clear somebody of charges, to exonerate them. And in the crossword, in the cryptic crossword, even more than in, I would say, the New York Times crossword, you have to really remember to think about these words in a different sense than what you're, than not only what you might assume it to be, but what the crossword constructor clearly is implying here. So because of the way clear is used, it is clear single fee. It really looks like an adjective. We think of it as being combined with the single. The fee is single. There's one of them. And the fee is also clear. It's unambiguous. But nope. Um, this, in the surface reading, that's true. The surface reading is a clear single fee, but the definition is clear as a verb. And it's just, you just have to really look out for that. All right. What is this? 14 down. What's this claret thing? Uh, some claret ordered for those who have just arrived. Um, I'm going to be pretty disappointed if I come this far. Oh my goodness. This is, this has got to be one of my longest videos to date. Um, Sorry about that. I mean, I'm obviously not great at these puzzles in general um, compared to the regular New York Times crossword, but um, also I, I am talking through it at great length. So I feel like it gives me some some degree of sort of plausible, um, some plausible excuse. Anyway, uh, bu -bu -bu, some claret ordered for those who have just arrived. I kind of want it to be for some reason, I really want claret to be red, but I don't, I don't really see where that would go unless it's here, R E D, and then that would have to be. We need some to mean a, or rather, sorry, I'm not. I'm, I'm being incredibly ineloquent right now. What I mean is, we would need some to resolve to something that is two letters with an a in it, and that doesn't really seem very likely. Some claret. Just, I kind of think, oh, I see what it is. Sorry, that took me ages. Okay. Um, the thing I was about to say, which is actually, as I was saying it, it, it triggered the answer in my brain. I was going to say, because of the question mark, you know what I was saying, I was saying earlier, you know, why do you need a question mark? All of these are puns, but I think it's because it's referring to the definition not the wordplay. The, the wordplay is always wordplay. It's in the name, so you don't need an indicator for it. But the answer, if the answer, if the if the definition is being a bit less literal or a bit having some misdirection or a sort of more idiomatic or rather non-idiomatic usage of a phrase, um, maybe that's what the question mark means. And in this case, I think the answer is late comers or those who have just arrived. They've only just arrived. They're late. So... What does that mean? How do I, how do I, how do I reverse engineer this? So, if it's those who have just arrived, then the wordplay is some claret. Or, oh, oh, oh! Sorry, I was making this all much more complicated than it needs to be. A thing that I often do, I say often, a handful of times I've done cryptics, but a thing that I find very useful is to look at the number of letters in the answer and see is there anything that could be anagrammed. Is there a word or a collection of words with that many letters or maybe off by one where there might be something else telling you to remove a letter? Um, but in this case, some claret has 10 letters and the ordered, this is actually probably the most straightforward um, anagram indicator we've had so far. We're going to order these letters in some claret into something that means those who have just arrived, latecomers. And I, I haven't really double checked this, but I suspect that latecomers is an anagram of some claret, S O. M E C L A R E T. Exactly. So there we go. We have one clue left, and it's this one about which I have essentially no ideas at all. Um, deal taking place in Mexico, perhaps. Deal. I mean, it really looks like it could be cope, doesn't it? But why? We cope. I am stuck. Um, 
deal taking place in Mexico, perhaps. I'm very sorry about this. I mean, it looks like it must be cope. How is it cope? How does that work? Cope. Deal taking place in Mexico, perhaps. So cope would be deal. So maybe... Is Mexico perhaps M-E for Mexico? Oh no, sorry. That's What am I talking about? That doesn't make any sense at all. Why did I put that there? C-O... Hope could be wrong, but I'm trying to think if there's any way to make it right. <laughs> um, very sorry about this. Take taking place. Taking cop? Do cop something? You take it in Mexico, perhaps E. Espanol? Um, this is ridiculous. I can't believe I've gotten this far. Um, and now I'm just completely stuck. Um, again, uh, if if you're if you're way ahead of me on this, which some of you must be, then uh, I'm very sorry. That's all I can say. Deal taking place in Mexico, perhaps. Taking place is place P. And Mexico, perhaps, is toe some or co somehow? Is it, does it solve if I put this in? It does. <laughs> so that is the answer. Okay, sorry. I just kind of wanted to... How does it work? <laughs> I don't know how it works. I can't believe I solved this whole thing. I've uh, This is maybe like the third cryptic crossword I've completed in my life, maybe fourth. So I'm sort of shocked that I was able to solve the whole thing through because usually I have to sort of stop and, you know, sometimes I'll even look things up because I'm, I'm so inept at these usually, but this one I actually did pretty well. And it is probably an easier cryptic to be fair. Um, but I just don't understand this cope. It's killing me. What is going on? Deal taking place in Mexico, perhaps. I mean, PE perhaps, but I'm sorry. This is this is a, a ludicrous end, but I think I have to stop because this is horrible video of just me sitting here being baffled. But I did solve the rest of them, and I'm pretty sure I understood. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I understood every single clue except for this one. Um, I have to search this and see if anyone has explained it. Anyone? I don't. I don't know if that's a thing people do, but. I'm going to have to look as soon as this video is over because it's it's killing me. Um, all right. Well, uh, this was just something I decided to make. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. I know it's much longer than an ordinary video, so I don't know if people are going to be into, into watching this whole thing. Congratulations if you've made it to the end. Um, and I hope you learned something about cryptic crosswords, if that's something you're interested in. Let me know if you'd like to see me do more cryptics on the channel. Um, I'm not against it at all. I would like to get better at these. I just, my two excuses are one, I'm not very good at them in general. I mean, I, I often find them quite, quite difficult. And also it's just, a, it's just time. I sort of did this on a whim and it didn't occur to me. It would be an hour and 20 minutes. Good Lord. But, um, I guess that's how long it took. Uh, although I, I was talking through these at great length, I still would, I'm still much slower solver at cryptics than I am at regular crosswords, but not, maybe not quite this uh, lengthy. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Again, please let me know in the comments what you what you made of this. And um, let me know if you can explain what's going on with COPE. I'm going to look that up right now. So maybe by the time you explain it, I'll already know. But, um, but, I, but me sitting here at this moment does not. 
So anyway, again, thanks for making it all the way to the end of this incredibly long video, this marathon cryptic solve. Um, thank you, Ali Gascoigne, for constructing a cryptic for the New York Times. It was fun. Um, I was pl pleasantly surprised to see it and even more pleasantly surprised that I was able to solve pretty much all of it. <laughs> all right. Thanks. I will see you soon on the channel for another standard New York Times daily crossword. Hope to see you then. Take care. Uh -huh.